Hello there. I am Becky Belote, and I am a Creative Memories Advisor from Newport News, Virginia. And today I want to show a little tipsy um, and a really easy double page spread using the newer circle cutter. I feel super bad because we had a meeting last night and I promised I would demo this to the girls on the call and we got all on a tangent and I didn't do it. So if you're watching Lexi, this is for you. Um, all right, so I'm gonna show you, a, um, like I said, um, how to use it. Um, so bear with me if you already know how, and then, or you can just scroll through to see the easy double page spread that you might want to make today because it's that easy and, and it's going to look really good. All right. So, um, let's go ahead and change my screen. Um, I did get a haircut today, so this is not how I normally look. You know how I normally look, right? Um, so anyways, this is just a one day thing. <laughs> All right. So let's see, let me change, change my camera for you. Oh, there we go. All right. So before I forget, I do want to point out this tool time buffet. So occasionally the company has limited edition pieces that you can earn. These are ones that you actually can buy, um, but only until August 9th or while supplies last. So um, I know my flyer is kind of ugly because my printer is, is out of blue ink. Um, with that said, you can go to our website and see these better anyways. I just wanted to make you aware of them. Some of these we have never sold before, like the first three, and some of them were available for a very brief time. So if you didn't get one, instead of paying $50 to somebody, um, I would buy them now <laughs> um, because sometimes these limited pieces, um, they come and go and then they are abused on our websites Um to to make you pay more than you need so so go get them yourself if you don't have an advisor i'd love for you to support me um if you have an advisor they would love for you to support them okay so um done with that now um first thing i just want to give you some tips on this guy on this circle cutter um so actually let me grab a piece of scrap this is not really a scrap, but this will do. All right. So what you need to keep in mind about your circle cutter is that there is a blade in here and you need to apply pressure. So if you just kind of wheel it around and you don't apply pressure, it's not going to cut. All right. So you need to apply pressure and you have to click in this little white thing right here makes your blade come out. So you want to be holding this and applying pressure if you want to cut. OK, so I made a few not notes on mine for you. This is the cutting end right here. This is the cutting end. And the cutting end um, has uh, some measurements, like if you want certain diameters for your circle, this is your measuring tool. So um, the little white knob here indicates the little white blade looking thing there that's pointing to this white row of numbers that you probably can't see well, but trust me, they are there. Um, over here, it's a drawing feature. So if you want to draw circles, um, so your your pen, your you, you want to use our fine tip pens or the fine tip pen on the end of the round tip pens work beautifully in this. Anything else I understand either doesn't work at all or will make a mess. So make sure you use our stuff for this. Um, it is um, has a little pen right there, a little pen icon, and that's to tell you that this is the measuring tool if you're going to draw a circle. So if you want a big old giant circle with the pen, you're going to want it to go to the biggest number on the black row. If you want a big old circle with with the cutting tool, you want to go all the way down here with, where the 12 is on that. Make sense? Yes, Becky, that makes sense. Awesome. All right. So um, we also have centimeters on this side, but I always use this side, um, probably would be easier to use the other side, but I don't. All right. So the next thing you need to understand is if you write with your right hand, then when you put your pen in here, this is not the right pen, but when you put your pen in here, your right hand better be holding it. Okay. And if you pick up a pair of scissors and you cut with your right hand, then your right hand should be on this blade here if you're cutting. All right. And the other and, and then your other hand is going to go here. So my non dominant hand, whichever one that is, goes here. If I'm cutting, my right hand is holding here. If I'm drawing, my right hand is here. 
All right. So it'd be totally opposite if you're a lefty. If you're a lefty, your right hand's going to be here. You're cutting here. You're drawing here. All right. So hopefully that will eliminate 90% of your problems. All right. Um, and again, to remember that. Um, oh, and just a little little tip. Your blade is here, which is opposite the top of this knob right here. So your blade is right under that knob right there. So kind of keep that in mind. So when you're cutting, remember how I said you could touch this all you want to, and it's not cutting till you hold that thing in and put down some pressure. So you can see, is that little dot on my paper or is it not? You don't want it to be out here because then you'll have a flat surface on your circle. Okay. So that's another little tip that, that might help you. All right. So I'm just going to cut a quick, so actually I'm not going to cut a quick circle um, because I'm going to show you that in the demo. All right. Um, what I instead am going to do is draw a circle for you because that I'm not going to show in the demo. So, um, so, and that, that, that feature is actually kind of a cool feature that we don't use quite as much. So what I'm going to do is I am I'm drawing. So I want a big old circle. So I'm looking at this black measuring um, here and I want it to, to be kind of big. So I'm going to put it out here at shoot. Let's do 10. Ah, let's do 10 and a half. Yeah, about 10 and a half. All right. And then um, since that's a really ginormous circle, I'm going to make sure that I have it in the middle. I can tell that I'm in the middle because I have a little crosshair thing there. I have a little crosshair thing there. Those things that you see if you're looking through a, through a, you know, I don't know what, what they're called, like if you're shooting. All right. And or I guess your camera, we could use your camera, right? They have those. And you want these to be lined up with the sixes, too. And that way I know that I'm in the middle since I'm drawing something kind of large. OK. This, I'm looking at this now to make sure it's over all my paper and it's kind of in the middle. Um, I'm going to shift it just a little bit. All right. Now I'm going to grab a pen, a real pen, one of our pens from our pen collection instead of this ballpoint pen. And I am going to use, which one do I want to use? How about the blue one? All right. So I am right-handed. So I am going to put my pen here. And I'm going to hold here and now I'm just going to draw. All right. The more you go around, the darker your ring is going to get. All right. And a really cool strategy is to use more than one color. So I'm going to put my top back on because I am prone to losing them. I'm going to grab the lime one. And what I'm going to do, if I put it in and, 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 and start drawing now, it's going gonna, it's gonna to draw right on top of where I just did. I don't want to have that. I want to have it kind of off, off a little bit. So I'm going to take this, this middle here and I'm going to shift it a little bit. And there's no rhyme or reason. I could shift it there. I could shift it there. I could shift it there. I could shift it there, up, down, whatever. I'm going to shift it a little bit um, this direction. All right. And then we're going to draw again. All right. And you could do a third one and do a fourth one and you get a really cool look. That's not really showing up very well on my monitor because it's kind of an, a different kind of color. OK. All right. And then you could also um, add, add decoration. You could add your little gemstones or you could use your dot pens to make dots. Actually, let's do a few of both as you know what I'm talking about. So just haphazardly little dots around here and there. And in our embellishment packs, we have these little gemstone guys. And um, I saved mine in my little storage containers. That's kind of a new product for us. Um, throw some yellow ones down. And that way I can pop them out anytime I want to. All right. Is that super cool? All right. So that is one thing that you can do with your cool circle cutter. All right. So let me. Get this out of our way for now. My dogs have been so barky today, so I really don't know what to expect. But we're going to give this a try. All right, so what I'm using today for the demo is a Mexico theme pack. If you haven't seen our theme packs, they're $10, just like our designer paper packs, but they come with four sheets. Well, they first come with the white paper. 
Then they come with a piece of coordinating cardstock. And then they come with um, four different, um, well, they're two matching. Well, okay. I don't know how to even say it, but there's, okay. So there's two that look like this front and back. And there's two that look like this front and back, okay? Also, you get a really hefty sticker sheet with it, all right? So I think I decided I was going to use the green today. And this is going to go really fast because it's really simple. So this has cactus on it. So I'm going to line them up so the cactus are going the same direction. I am going to use my circle cutter and I'm going to cut them both at the same time because I'm making a double page spread and I want this to be fast for you. I am cutting. This is the white knob. This is the white icon. We're going to use the white ruler and we are going to slide it. I'm going to go to the 11, but you could make it even bigger if you're really good at making sure your um, it cuts, you know, it falls in the middle. All right. So somebody is trying to call me. Sorry for the buzzing. I'm not answering right now. I bet it's my friend Melissa because she always seems to know when I'm doing something that she can't call. All right, so I'm just going to double check, make sure it looks like I'm parting. Remember how I said to make sure that dot is overneath the paper all the way around? That's what I'm checking and it looks really good. All right, now remember I'm cutting through two sheets of paper, put a little bit more pressure than usual, um, hold in the white knob and wheel around. I might have missed a little bit there, so I'm going to do that. Now, if you're doing this at home, do not move your paper, <laughs> okay? Um, I'm going to double check and make sure I cut it all the way around. I didn't miss anywhere. Um, I'm pretty, I feel pretty confident that I didn't. All right, now the next step that I think is super cool. Now, stay with me. Really pay attention because if you screw up on this, this is where it's going to be. I am going to loosen this dial. There's a white dial where we set it to the measure. I'm going to loosen it a little bit. Now, I'm going to take my hand up a little bit. There's a little cross here right here that I can see that you can't, and there's no way for me to show it to you the way that I'm doing. All right, but, but, but it's there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this firmly in place. I am going to grab this blue thing. And I'm going to slide it that way because I want to now do a one inch smaller circle. All right. Now I'm going to tighten it back up. All of those steps are important. You loosen, you keep your hand here, you pull the blue as far as you want. You can put whatever measurement you wanted. I, I made it about one inch smaller and the measurements are here. It's very easy to see. All right. And then I'm going to do that step again. All right. Now, these pieces of paper right here, oh, look, I thought I cut it all the way and I missed it just a tad. Usually it's perforated, even if you miss. All right, so these pieces of paper are going to look great if you want to use them for another double page spread. I'm not today, but look how pretty that looks if you want to build in there. All right, I'm going to put these aside, though, out of my way. Um, these we're going to use. And I think I'm going to build on navy card stuff, I think. Well, before I do that, though, what did I do with that piece of paper? Did I say, oh, this one. Before I do that, I'm just going to show you how this would look really nice if we just threw that in there, huh? All right. So what I just cut, that's the middle. I can throw that inside. And now you can see how pretty that is in combination. All right. So, but we're not doing that today. But I wanted to show you to you. So I'm going to grab some navy paper. All right, I am going to put adhesive on the side. I think I'm going to, so, so I'm flipping up. This is the back of the paper. I am going to put that down first on both sides, about in the middle. Do it again. And 
making sure I can still kind of see my cactus print. So I am paying attention to the way that I'm laying it down. All right. Um, now, before I stick now, you know what, guys, this is going to look pretty already. I mean, this looks pretty without doing anything else, doesn't it? All right. So I just I didn't wanted to point that out that this is ready to go already. If you if you like what you've done, you can save these guys for something else. But today we're not. I'm going to carry on. So move this aside for a second. Stack your cactus papers back together. Grab your circle cutter. My favorite hole to cut um, for using to put photos inside is a point four point three. So the four is in white because I'm cutting. The next little dash over is 4.2. The next one is 4.4. I'm going to go between the two and the four to get a 4.3, making sure they're stacked very nice. And I'm going to put a cut a circle kind of towards the edge. You could do it in the middle, but then you have less options. I'm going to do it towards the edge. All right. Now, I'm going to flip this over and put it in. And I'm going to flip this over and put it in. Maybe the other direction, but it doesn't matter. You could put, put it wherever you want, right? Now, you could either put these back in or not. It's going to look great either way. So you have this look. Looks like it's been matted. And then you actually could use this somewhere else. You could use it on the same page and put another um, photo in it, couldn't you? All right. Or if you want to put it in, it would look like this. Okay, so this is the Mexico theme pack. I love it. This is not a Mexico photograph, so I'm not going to stick that down. But I see some nice vision with these little pennants. Um, I, um, I haven't even touched this pack because we haven't been to Mexico in a long time. But I'm hoping that you all have been to Cancun or Cozumel this summer and may want this beautiful theme pack. So this is going to look super pretty across the top if I had the right pictures to go with this. Um, I do like my board, my double boards. That way, when I put this down, I can match it across from the one that I just did to ensure that it's about the same height away from the whatever. All right. How's that? OK, and then, of course, I could add some more stuff. I'll do that later. I'll finish it up later for my clients. But um, I've already kind of finished one to save us a little bit of time today, or sort of finished one. Um, this one, I did use Lullaby Lane. Just um, this one, let's just put, we'll put, this had a stripe, and I want that to go vertically, so I'm going to be careful how I place that. You can see how nice that's going to look there. Um, you could add a, um, this is a, a mat from Lala Ballet. It's really funny. These are wedding pictures, um, but I thought this, this color scheme was really pretty with, with the wedding pictures. And so now we have that that we can add there. Um, this one we could put there. You could mat it or not. And I even took one of the little mats from Lullaby Lane and I trimmed it so that it was a little smaller. So this is from the mat back, as is this. I added a couple of the little embell little hard embellishments that were from that set. Um, and then we'll put that um, right down here, maybe. Mm. I'm gonna do it that way, I think. Might put it more towards the top and add an angle like this. All right, is that cool? All right, so I hope that you'll try this. I think it is super easy and you might want to try it on a scrap first if you've never used your circle cutter. But um, I love it. It's super fast. People always ask me, what about cutting photos? I don't typically cut my photos with this. I usually cut my photos 
with this. In fact, in fact, I usually use this exact pattern. The reason for that is there are little gummies on the back of our cutting so that it doesn't slide a lot on your photograph. All right. Um, and this, you really, when you put it down, it, it's like a little compass. It's got a little sharp point. It actually is being held by a, um, a sharp point that I don't really want on my photograph. Okay. So I'm still using this for my photographs and I, but I love this for paper products. It's just a lot faster. It, does, it has a lot more uh, less limitations as far as how big or small I want it to be. I can be very precise with this. All right. So that's all I got. Let me change this back out so I can say goodbye to you fairly and squarely. There I am. <laughs> okay. So thank you so much for watching. And um, don't forget to um, go check out um, these limited edition tool times. We also have a new paper line that's going to be super pretty, especially if you love flowers, beautiful colors for the spring, summer. So anyways, thanks again. And um, y'all have a great week. Bye.